if I'm using the analogy of the CEO mindset, this group of support would be my board of directors. I had to think about what could I do to, to give them tools so that they could help me achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. I had to think about what is the return on investment that I can give to them for the time and the energy that they would give to me. I'm Michael Santos with Prison Professors, and today we're going to be talking about how I earned a master's degree in prison with hopes that other people can, can use their time if they're going into the judicial system or, or if they're in there in manners that will allow them to come back stronger with their dignity, and, dignity intact and with opportunities to grow and prosper. Now, if you like this kind of information, I do hope that you will subscribe to the Prison Professors program and that you will also support our sponsors at cbdtv.com. We produce every, uh, every day, we produce new content with hopes of teaching and inspiring people who are going into the system or who are experiencing the system. And this is our way of striving to be the change that we want to see in the world. I served 26 years in prison, but I came back to society strong primarily because I learned how to think differently while I was in prison. I never strove to, to develop this reputation in prison or I never bought into that mindset of failure when I was inside. Instead, I always had the CEO mindset. It's something that I learned very early on in the journey, not necessarily when I first got arrested. And you can read the backstory or listen to the backstory from some of our previous videos that are a part of this playlist. But it was really when I got in there that I started to read and started to think about what is the best possible outcome. That means I don't want an outcome that is similar to what everybody else gets in that prison system. And that message in there is, is really a bad message. It suggests or it encourages people to forget about the world outside and to focus on their time inside. But that's not the lesson that I learned from leaders from leaders that built businesses or built their life or became exceptional in any area of their life, they always had the CEO mindset. They always realized that I've got to first define success. What am I going after? Second, they have to create their own tools, tactics, and resources that will help them execute on this strategy. So they've got, they create a strategy that they document, then they create the tools, tactics, and resources that will help them uh, achieve what they want, and they measure their progress every single day. That's what it means to have the CEO mindset, and it is what I really started to develop when I was first in there. I started to think about the problems that I'm going to face when I get out of prison. I knew I was going to be facing a sentence of, of life without the possibility of parole when I had this, this shift in my mindset, but I always believed that I would be able to influence change, that I would be able to get out sooner than a life sentence. And you know, this was something I had to start thinking about projecting a long ways into the future because I was only 20 years old when I started breaking the law. I was 23 years old when I got caught and I was arrested on August the 11th, 1987, but I knew that I was going to someday get out, or at least that's what I believed. But I believed it would be my own decisions that influenced when I got out and more importantly, how the world received me when I got out. And so I began thinking about, okay, I know that if I'm going to go back to society someday, who am I going to encounter? Who are those people? And, and then I needed to think about, well, what can I do to build a, a, a group of support, a support system around me? And that kind of is what I would call, if I'm, if I'm using the analogy of the CEO mindset, this group of support would be my board of directors. I had to think about what could I do to, to give them tools so that they could help me achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. I had to think about what is the return on investment that I can give to them for the time and the energy that they would give to me. So after I earned my undergraduate degree in prison, which I explained in a separate video and I encourage you to watch, I began thinking about, okay, this undergraduate degree is a, is a good start, but it's not the end. I need to, to do more. And I knew that I, where I was, I was in an environment that unjustly 
um, really had invested in mass incarceration. And that means that there were, you know, grandfathers serving time with their sons that were serving times also with their sons. And so frequently there were three generations of people inside of the penitentiary where I was serving time. And that intergenerational cycle of failure is a problem that I wanted to help resolve. So I thought about, well, how can I do that while simultaneously helping myself uh, prepare so that when I come back to society, I can emerge strong. And education was going to be my tool. So after getting an undergraduate degree, I thought, well, if I earn a law degree, a law degree will help me help those people. I may be able to help other people in custody um, navigate their way through judicial proceedings or even communicate more effectively with their lawyers. So I started writing to every law school in the nation, hoping that I could get in while I was simultaneously writing to all of my support network and explaining to them what my strategy was. So I documented the strategy saying, I am laying out a pathway to prepare myself for success upon release and I want you to invest in me. So this is not different from what it takes for me to build companies outside now that I've been free from prison for more than, well, it'll be seven years in August since I concluded uh, serving 26 years inside. I've had to build a number of companies and the way that I did that is I would always get funding from, from other people. So I'd always have to build a story and that's what I was doing while I was in prison. Initially, after graduating, getting my undergraduate degree from Mercer University in 1992, I really wanted to transition into law school. And so I put my board of directors together, my people, and I asked them if I can get in, will you allow me, uh, will you provide me with funding? And this funding that you provide will help me live a life of meaning, relevance, and dignity while I'm going through the remaining time in my sentence. That was in 1991, I guess, because I was still in undergraduate school when I kind of started that process. And I didn't finish my sentence until 2013. So it was, you know, there was a long, I had 21 more years in the system um, when I was making this decision, but I was helping people understand, hey, this is a big problem in society. This is a way that I can prepare. I want you to invest in me. And the return on investment is that I will be able to help more people. And so I got that commitment from several people that I didn't know. But previously, I told you about how I had built mentors at relationships while I was in prison in another video. And I just reached out to them, suggesting that if I did what I say I can do, would you help me fund the, the mission? And, I, and once I got commitments to raise the capital, I started fishing, sending letters out to law schools across the country and just explaining, hey, I'm in prison. I've made a lot of bad decisions. I am working to atone, to reconcile with society. And I would like uh, an opportunity to go to law school. And I kept sending those letters out to every ABA school in the nation, American Bar Association school in the nation hoping to get into law school and you know the reality is that it's it's not easy to, to, to overcome these kinds of obstacles but if you try it kind of goes in line with that messaging of that we've seen um that I, I wrote about in an earlier video about Jim Collins, who in his book, Good to Great, he talks about this analogy of spinning a disc and how tough it is to get this disc initially spinning. You know, it's 5,000 pounds in his, in his description and it's sitting on a spindle. And to get that thing spinning takes a lot of effort and energy. But once you start making progress, the disc gets a little easier to turn. And that's one of the lessons that I learned while I was in prison is that if I continue to apply myself and achieve incremental goals like getting an undergraduate degree, it becomes easier for other people to believe in me. That's that met, that pathway led to me raising the funding that eventually led to my master's degree, but it also allowed schools to believe in me and to believe it makes sense to admit me. Um, but you know, I, I, as the more law schools I wrote to, the more rejections I got, that's okay. I become a friend of rejections. Most of the deans told me that they teach by the Socratic method, um, meaning they want to interact with, with, with the people by asking questions and having the people, the, the students respond to the questions. And that's the way they learn. And because I was not in that environment, that community of scholars, I wouldn't be able to participate in that live interaction. So I may not have been able to get the training that I would have needed in law school, 
But there's a great philosopher. Some of you may know him. His name is Mick Jagger, who, uh, who, who sang a great song. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a product growing up in the 70s and the 80s, so I'm a big fan of classic rock and roll. But one of his songs, he sang that you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. And I got what I need. I didn't get into law school, but the dean at Hofstra University wrote me back and he told me, he said, look, we can't let you into law school because of the American Bar Association rules, but we have a little more discretion in graduate school. Um, we can waive the graduate re records examination for you. We have the discretion to waive the residency requirement that you participate in class. Um, but if we were to do this for you, what would you want to study? And I said, you know, I really think that we're in an era of mass incarceration, which is a great social injustice. Later, I've written about it as it's one of the greatest social injustices of our time. And I said, I wanted to contribute to that. And that, that argument made sense to the decision makers at Hofstra University. And they agreed to allow me in a probationary period. Um, and that's what led to me getting, getting, working toward my master's degree. And they asked me, well, what do you want to study? And I, I, the more I told them about mass incarceration, we were able to structure a program that focused on the disciplines of anthropology and uh, uh, sociology and political science. Why those three subjects? Well, anthropology is really the study of cultures of different cultures of people, and I was immersed in a culture of confinement. So I thought it would give me a, 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 an abundance of resources that I could use to study and learn and write. With regard to political science, you know, it, the, 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 the era of mass incarceration costs, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars to fund just to, just to make people, you know, to, to make people less likely to function in society. The, the longer we keep somebody in corrections, statistics show that the less likely those people are to succeed in society. And that's a big problem. That's a social problem that influences every American citizen. So I really wanted to change that outcome. That that was a problem, and so I was able to use those three different disciplines of anthropology, sociology, and political science to work through this process by interviewing other people who are in prison, um, by uh, writing their stories, by uh, in reading all of the literature, and learning the theories that govern a lot of policy decisions, and then I would you know, create my own body of work with a methodology that I would say, what can we do better to improve the outcomes of our criminal justice system? And those findings led to a series of published papers that I was able to present in um, you know, peer-reviewed journals or in conferences by, by way of sending my, my written documentation. And of course, then I wrote a master's thesis that, was, uh, that, that, that resulted in me getting my master's degree and really allowing me to become, to advance my, my, my goal of becoming a published author. And that is really the strategy that worked for me to get a master's degree in prison. And I would really use this as a case study for anybody else that's in there. Anybody that was in prison with me could have done the same thing. I went to prison in 1987. I had a terrible education when I went in there just because of my own laziness as, a, as an adolescent. Uh, but I changed my life, and I ch it all started by changing my mindset. And that's what I would really encourage anybody else to be thinking about. Don't think about the problems that you're enduring right now. Think about what you can do to emerge successfully. That's what we offer at Prison Professors. And if you like this kind of messaging, I really encourage you to subscribe to the Prison Professors channel. Leave some comments below uh, so I know a little bit more about how to contribute. But what we really do, thanks to the sponsorship from CBDTV.com, is we produce these videos and send them into jails and prisons with hopes of changing the mindset of people who are serving time. And we do hope that that you will support our efforts, not by sending us money, but visit our team at cbdtv.com. And if you use CBD to sleep better at night, to, to, to relieve the aches and pains in your body, or if you use CBD to um, feed your pets and remove, re remove some of the anxiety from, from your pets or anything else, 
please visit us at cbdtv.com. You'll accomplish two goals at once. One, you'll satisfy your CBD needs, but two, you will help us continue these efforts of being the change that we want to be in the world, and that's helping more people who are going through the criminal justice system emerge successfully. Hope that you will be a, a member of our community, and uh, uh, you can count on another video tomorrow. Thank you.